Okay, here we go. The real reason Norn shut herself in and Rudy's response to it. Skill issue. I should feel better. Norn's all right. She had like a pretty good moment, actually. She apologized. She cried. It was a beautiful moment. Let's see what Mr. Annie News has to say. Norn and her isolation may have been the focus of this episode, but it's Rudy's trauma that's the overarching theme here. <laughs> even in Mr. Annie News's video. Norn can't even be the highlight. Norn is not even the most important thing. It's Rudy's trauma that overrides whatever the bullshit Norn is going through. Just like how it was with Nanahoshi's breakdown, Norn shutting herself in forced Rudy to face his inner demons and the traumatic... Rudy's gotta be the biggest fucking narcissist, man. Nobody. No, you think you're suffering? No, I'm suffering more. Your bullshit suffering it only exists? Nanahoshi can have a mind break? Norn can shut herself in? None of that shit matters, because at the end of the day, it's to re it remind the audience that Rudy, too, has gone through these issues. He'll, you know, connect the dots and look to his past, and then he'll be able to handle it better. No one, in, the, in, in like the trauma Olympics, the suffering Olympics, Rudy's like, nah, it's me first. Response it caused allowed him to finally overcome them. He was able to reflect on why things happened the way they did on Earth, and see from a different perspective the way it had affected him. This in turn helped him to find the best solution for these two, and in a way, them breaking through also allowed him to break through. Whatever lingering regrets and remorse Rudy had from his shut-in days were now gone as indicated in the final lines of the episode. This was the recurring theme for the majority of Season 2, and now that his character is less hindered by his past, it serves as the perfect moment to transition into a turning point. 3! TP3, it's gonna be tonight. Yeah, it's gonna be tonight. We'll be watching that tonight. It'll be up later, though. Before we can get to that, though, there was quite a bit more to Norn's story that we need to examine first. The true extent to her emotional buildup and why it is she became Ooh, a shut-in herself. Arts. So, as we look at that and Rudy's self-reflection through her, we'll get to see everything we missed from what I found was the best episode of Season 2 so far. Best episode of Season 2. Last episode. Hmm. Season 2 has been an entire yap fest with slice of life elements and rom com elements and serious mo Better than Rudy's dick getting fixed? Better than Season 2 Part 1 finale? That's probably the top contender, right? Norn's development. Norn getting over it is better than Rudy fixing his dick with fits. I, I don't know. I feel like the whole Sylphie thing in the cave, the realization of who she even is. Oh my god, it's you. I don't know. I, I, I feel like that was like crazy. I don't know. I, I, then again, everyone, this is subjective, right? Everyone values different things more. Some people value Norn's, you know, and Rudy's relationship and them getting over it and Rudy being able to respond to the trauma that he can also relate to, right? Some people value that more. Some other people think that erectile dysfunction being fixed is better. I don't know. Everyone has their own different things. Let's get started. But first. Oh, very quickly before that, though, if you've watched this. You fucking cheeky motherfucker. He got another different ad read before it was. But first, before we start, this one was. Oh, but of season two so this far. one was oh let's get started oh very quickly before that though oh very quick he's getting creative with these uh figurine ads anyways go back to main content to rudy norn's abrupt decision was quite the serious one because the day he decided to isolate himself in his past life had resulted in him becoming a shut-in for the rest of his life the reason he never left his room after that was because he truly thought that everyone was out to get him to him, the world was a dangerous place in which bullying was the only thing that awaited him. So, with bullying being the very thing that started all this, to Rudy he felt it was easiest to just avoid that misery altogether. And that wasn't the worldview that Rudy wanted Norn to be stuck with. In fact, when Rudy first heard that Norn had shut herself into her room, it had actually triggered a trauma response which took Rudy back to the very mistake that had created this worldview for him. That one instance where he stood up for himself in the cafeteria was the sole moment that, to him, changed his life forever. Not gonna lie, this is season one shit that I didn't even watch comprehensively. Like, before we started the reactions, I just watched the anime not really giving a fuck, so like, this is stuff that I'm not really familiar with. So, if there was even a possibility that Norn was going through the same thing now, Rudy was determined to punish those responsible. He looked even more mad in the manga. I think this is the manga, right? Not the light novel. Right? Rudy looked pissed off in the anime, but this is like, goddamn. 
He would seek justice until Norn felt that she was safe again. It didn't matter who he hurt in the process, since if they were terrorizing Norn, then Rudy was sure to make them regret it. These of poor course, first Rudy's year kids. interrogation revealed the cause was him all along, and it brings up this underlying issue that Norn has constantly had to deal with. You see, even before she'd enrolled into the university here, she always felt compared to Aisha. This wasn't just at school either, since at home her grandmother made sure to make those differences clear too. That grandma's a fucking bitch. Zenith aside. So, obviously, she, she, she basically shit on both granddaughters, huh? Aisha for basically being better, therefore, you're the daughter of a concubine, even though Lilith is, she's, she's like a second wife, right? I don't know. Anyway, just kind of telling her that you're not really, you're not really uh, real. And then Norton is like, skill issue. You have our main bloodline, yet why you're not better than this fucking bastard child? Not a bastard child, but you know what I mean. She made sure to let Norn know exactly how inferior she was. Damn. <laughs> so, before Norn could even... <laughs> kind of wanted to see those grandma scenes. It would have been fucking hilarious. Now, what she's doing is terrible, but something about child abuse in anime is hilarious to me. And ...settle down and start experiencing this new chapter of her life. Not one full day went by before she was being compared all over again. She was experiencing the exact same treatment she received back in Millis. The only thing that changed was the person she was being compared to. That being the case, to Norn it must have seemed that no matter where she went, she would always be forced to hear about just how unspectacular she was. Her interactions were a constant reminder that she was the least talented member of her family. Combine this with the fact that Rudy's behavior was perceptibly short of exemplary and to be inferior to someone this like degenerate that, piece well, of shit. I'm sure it only made the comparisons feel ten times worse. Rudy wasn't- I didn't really think about that. Not just being compared in, in terms of like objective feats, the different things that Rudy has done, but also on top of that, he's a degenerate freak. So it's like my degenerate prodigy brother. That's who I'm being compared to. Huh. Never really thought about it like that. I'm gonna let that stop him from trying to help though, because he knew from experience the longer she stayed in there, the worse it'd get for her. He knew even just a month could have serious consequences. She likely wouldn't start to regret it until at least a year or two later, but at that point the damage would be done already. Whatever feelings of remorse she'd have about wanting to do things differently wouldn't change the fact that the past however many years were wasted. Norn may not be able to realize it now, but it was only a matter of time before she did. And it was Rudy's job to help her realize that sooner than later. Rudy would then ask Linnea and Persena what they would do in this situation, and Steel their panties. response clearly showed that they were too narcissistic to even understand what Norn was going through. <laughs> I'm not stupid, so I wouldn't known yet, so that's a little bit of a cap, but these girls would never have to. Well, these girls are pretty phenomenal, phenomenal, right? Like, compared to their tribe, they're like the main, like, princess daughter, right? I don't think they're really good characters to, you know, ask about how Norn be feeling. They did, however, know someone who was like Norn, and you'd be surprised to hear that it was actually their aunt Gawain. Gawain? What? She was not remarkable back in the past? You see, she used to go around starting fights all the time, then one day she ended up training and became a sword king. Okay. Gawain's case was a little bit different though, since while there was definitely a chance Norn had some latent unexplored talent, it didn't have to be sword player magic. Norn, I don't see her really being a fighter at all. If anything, she's probably gonna be diplomacy, kind of like Princess Ariel, right? There were plenty of interests Norn could explore that neither him nor Aisha had even considered. This was a potential solution for Norn's particular case, but in the off chance she wouldn't be talented at anything, she could always do what Xanaba did and be happy simply indulging in a specific hobby. <laughs> naked, by the way. He stays here naked sometimes. Actually, he has his pants on right now. That said, Rudy did also consider that he may just be overreacting a bit. I mean, Norn was, after all, only 10 years old now. This, But compared to when Rudy was 10, we're talking about the trajectory of these kids. Well, then again. She doesn't need to be exceptional already. We can't be comparing her. So, like, like, 
when she's of age and she can develop later. I, I keep saying, I think Norn is a late game scaling unit, not early game. It was only her second day in her room too, so if this was just her being sulky, then to call her a shut-in would be a bit premature right now. That didn't mean Rudy was just gonna sit back and wait either, since as her older brother, he knew he actively needed to support her. The space which he thought she may have needed before was no longer seeming like the proper solution anymore. It was possible staying hands off would turn out to be the best for her, but considering her age, Rudy felt like more attention was better. These were all the things Rudy was thinking about as he approached Norn's situation. Eventually, he'd come up with the covert operation with Linnea and Persena, and that whole part where he opens the door to himself was a fantastic creative choice unique to the anime. That was really cool. There were some other scenes too where Rudy just like gets reminded of his own past, even though it should be Norm being the focus too. Again, I just keep making jokes about how even in like fucking Norn's depression episode where she should be the focus, Rudy's like, nah, nah, my shit comes first. There's a real emphasis on all the inner demons Rudy has to fight against. Especially since the breakdown with Nanahoshi caused a similar relapse too. So, it was as Rudy walked towards Norn in her room that he would remember all the things he hated hearing. He wasn't going to pressure her or say she was causing trouble or even confront her in a way a parent should to a 10 year old. Perhaps a slap on the head may make her do what he wanted now, but as a long term solution it definitely wouldn't solve anything. Just keep slapping her on the head then. No, we can't be doing that. We can't be doing anything that's too objectively correct. What these kind of people want is not, sorry, need is not an objectively correct, you know, uh, solution. It is just to be given time and to just listen. Plus, with the reason for her being here falling solely upon him, Rudy knew he didn't have the right to do any of that. If anything, he felt it should be him apologizing to her. Saying sorry wasn't going to change anything though, so the only action now was to hack- Just stand there? What did he really do? He just showed up, right? And he stood there. He was like... And then there was the whole... And then Norm was basically just thinking in her head, and then she remembered the vouchers from other characters, like Rougier and Paul, and other characters, saying how great Rudy of a person is. Hash it out together. Though he didn't know the words or exactly how to act, Rudy did his best to talk, saying whatever he could to strike a chord with her. Holy shit, she's staring at us. In the anime, she was like looking down. Here, this is an actual death glare. Eventually, he came to realize he just didn't understand her, and that was in part due to the distance he decided to keep from her. It was in this moment Rudy came to see that he didn't know anything about his sister. What he thought was an effort to give her space was in actuality him not even trying to get to know Norn. This made Rudy think perhaps this was actually a lost cause, but when he remembered the times his own brother came and did the same, that's when he knew that this had to be handled by him. There was no use waiting for Paul or anyone else to try and fix this, since if he left now then things may never change. As for the reason why Rudy felt that way, well, while his own brother sat in silence waiting for hours for him, he, he eventually too? left and stopped coming back. Others had come and tried to do the same, but in the end, they too would be ignored and disregarded. Perhaps it was something his brother had arranged to try and help him, but Rudy's isolation made him certain that no one could understand how he felt. Well, now that he was on the receiving end of this treatment, Rudy finally had an idea of how his own older brother might have felt then. I ain't gonna lie, I'm a terrible person, I'm a piece of shit, and when I see people like Rudy right now in super depression or known like that, I don't really feel sorry for them. I feel just like frustrated at like people that's trying to actively help out. Probably an insane take, probably super cruel, but like this is how I feel. I, I think that it gets super fucking frustrating when someone that you're trying to actively help doesn't really do anything to get better. Right? It's, it just sucks for both ends. On one side, you're actively trying to fucking help this person going out of your own way, wasting your own goddamn time and resources, trying to reach out to them, and they don't even try to fucking meet halfway. And then the other side, on Rudy's side, right, the depressed people, they don't want to hear objectively good reasoning, they just want to be, like, they just want to mourn, they just want to fucking be depressed and wallow in their pity, and it just sucks for fucking everyone. That's why issues like this, it's just like, it is just so emotionally draining for everyone involved in this. Well this brings us now to Norn's perspective, and though the anime portrayed most of the important stuff, there were several more layers to all the hardships she had to deal with. The first was the initial impression she got of Rudy, and despite Paul telling her how he was the one that provoked the fight, the only thing that mattered was that it seemed like Rudy was going to kill Paul here.
A fucking 10 year old kid beating up a fucking alcoholic dad that fucking, you know, forced all his problems onto his child, bro. He understood Paul mocked his journey and made light of his survival, but the fact that was totally first deserved. Of Rudy was but this kid's not gonna understand. To kill Paul. Well, that was reason enough for her to hate him. So it was that hate that constantly built a long time after, since everyone around her always felt the need to compliment Rudy. Whether it be Paul, Lilia, or his sister Aisha, the praise was inescapable and it only made Rudy even more despicable to her. Then Aisha was a person she hated almost as much too, because at the school they used to go to in Millis, Aisha would always insist on competing with her. Whether it was the classroom or the gym, Aisha felt the need to challenge Norn in everything and Okay, so in Millis they also went to school and they kinda competed like the wall for Aisha though. Like can you blame her? Cause like she got told by grandma that you're not a legitimate child. You're the daughter of a fucking whore. You don't belong here. So, like, of course she's going to feel the need to be better than Norn on every single, you know, possible opportunity. Like, this is a fucked up thing. Yo, fuck that grandma. And everything Norn would always lose to her. Aisha would then rub it in how much better she was, and that in turn made Norn feel like she was inadequate. Every day she was made to feel like this loser. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. ideally, if Norn was a Sigma, if she had that grind set, she would take Aisha as flex and not take it personally, but use it as motivation and fuel to further better herself and compete and become rivals and thrive together. But not everyone can just do that, right? Not everyone's built like that. If you try to push someone that isn't built like that, they'll end up just collapsing, which is, again, fucking more skill issue. It's fucking annoying, but you gotta cater towards different types, right? If you want her to succeed, then you can't just treat her like everything else, right? If everything just be looks like a nail, then you're just gonna, sorry, if, if, if everything looks like a nail, you're just gonna use the hammer the, every time, right? Every day she was made to feel like this loser, and every day the pressure to become better was increased by her very own grandmother. But same for Aisha! Same for Aisha. That's why she's fucking trying to, to be better than Norm. To prove that she is not an illegitimate child. You know, that's the daughter of a whore. Since Zenith's mother was aware of the way things were with her and Aisha, the contempt she had for Aisha was, to say the least, palpable. This bitch should have the contempt towards the grandma. What the fuck are you? No, this is unfair to tell a kid like this, right? She's even younger than 10 right now. But like, swear to God, all the hatred should be directed towards the fucking grandma. Aisha and Norm should be like, you know what? We're actual blood related siblings. We should love each other. We should both say, fuck you, grandma. We don't need to, you know, we don't need to like work towards your affections or whatever. But like, they, they can't understand that. They can't fucking understand that. From the way she called her illegitimate to the high expectations she placed on Norn, it was clear Zenith's- Look at that line, bro. I don't remember being the grandmother of an illeg illeg illegitimate child, dude. Fuck that grandma. ...she placed on Norn, it was clear Zenith's mother wasn't the very best grandparent. She's terrible. That being the case, there were certain bars that needed to be met for the lady of the Latria family, and to Norn that meant she needed to be competent. That's pretty difficult when the person you're competing against is Aisha, though, since for Aisha, the way she dealt with her problems was by being better than Norn. <laughs> you see, the reason she felt the need to always challenge her was because that was the only way she could fight back against the people who denied her what she saw as her rightful place in the world. She wanted to see how far her potential could take her, but Lilia and Zenith's mother refused to acknowledge that. So the only thing she could do then was take it all out on Norn. <laughs> We're on the same team here, and that's the fucked up thing. That's the thing that we don't understand. In fact, things like this happen all the time. Here's a random fucking example, right? Here's an example that matches Norn and Aisha hating each other when they should be hating grandma and realize that they're on the same side. It's like when you go to a restaurant and they make you tip. And if you don't tip because the service is bad, they get the server gets mad at you. But it's like, listen, we are both working class. We should not be upset at each other. We should be mad at your fucking boss who made it such that people need to tip and fucking pay for the offset that your boss is not paying you. But a lot of the times, the ruling class are able to divide and conquer people like us and make us fight against each other without realizing that maybe that this energy should be directed at the people above who fucking made this system. 
anyways this is this is getting way off tangent but you know they should hate the grandma grandma's the As boss for the high expectations placed on norn this resulted in forced etiquette classes and specific ceremony lessons none of which was anything norn was particularly good at she would mess up repeatedly and get scolded because of it, then even insulted as apparently such behavior was a product of adventurer blood. <laughs> to Norn, she knew this was an Adventurer blood? I guess it's crude, and it's like, you know, Paul's an adventurer. I thought Zenith is an adventurer too! What, what, you, what is the fuck, what? Adventurers are bad? What the fuck is grandma? What, what, what do they do, bro? Why the fuck are they so important? Insult to both Paul and Zenith, so it wasn't long before she started hating her grandmother too. In fact, it's actually the reason she was able to stick with Paul past Millis rather than stay here. If not for Rager showing up when he did, then Norn might have actually been able to convince Paul to let her go all the way to Megarit with him. It's lucky she didn't though, since if she did, she knew she would have made things a whole lot harder. Now, <laughs> Yeah, for Paul, because she's a fucking dead weight. <laughs> it was on their journey north that Norn would oh, once no, again stop. be faced with how inadequate she was. Aisha had somehow taken charge in a group with two adults, yet whenever Norn would try and do the same, anything she said basically got ignored. It wasn't fair that Aisha's opinions seemed to carry more weight. It wasn't fair? What do you mean it's not fair? She provides value. This is objective. You say something, it matters, people listen to you. What do you mean it's not fucking fair? This is fair. What do you mean? I guess it's not fair on how she can just do it effortlessly while Norn has to suffer and it doesn't seem like she can contribute anything. And then we can kind of blame genetics on that. Then yes, that's not, that's unfair, yes. ...than her own. I mean, they were both the same age after all. The only reason she was able to put up with it was because, unlike how her feelings would usually be ignored, Richard would actually take the time and listen to her complaints. Really? He displayed consideration for the way she felt, Aww. and that was something not many did around her. Richard is actually such a good parent, even though he ate his son. <laughs> That's the fucked up curse of the spirits, right? We don't, we, we, we ignore that part. But other than that, Richard always, you know, cares for children. He's very good with kids. He makes sure that they are taken care of and protected. And Richard spent lots of time complimenting Rudy. <laughs> I can't wait to meet him again, says Richard right now. Bro showed up and left within a fucking day. Probably didn't even spend 24 hours because he saw Sylphie and was like, shit, this motherfucker got a wife. Damn, I remember my family back in the day. I'm out. Fuck you, Rudy. Though, and to see such a stoic man smile at the mention of a name she despised so dearly, well, that's when hate started to turn to fear. To hear Rudy was this powerful magician worthy of respect only amplified the vision of violence that she knew for him. It made her terrified at all the things that he might do to her, and there was always this looming fear that she might get hit the same way her dad was. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at this, but the image of Rudy beating Norn up with this fist. <laughs> no, no, that would never happen. He would never, he would never beat Norn like that. No, 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 no. But I would like to see a fist fight between Aisha and Norn to hash things up. Fast forward to when she finally met Rudius again, and to see him prioritizing his happiness when Paul's out risking his life only fueled the flames surrounding her hate for him. She couldn't bring herself to say anything though, since if she did, she believed that Rudy might hit her. She wasn't even sure Rudyard would step in if he did, and it was that feeling that no one would protect her that be- That join in on the beating, fucking 2v1, Rudyard and Rudy versus Norm. And the cycle of loneliness which would consume her. To her, there wasn't a single person that was on her side anymore. So, the best she could do to avoid the hate, the judgment, and the feelings of inadequacy was- Remove yourself from the place by going to the dorm. ...to stay out of the way and avoid everyone. Yeah. At least that way no one would be able to tell her just how inferior she was. Eventually she would be told to apply for university and the fight which would come at the peak of this conversation would end in tears not because of Aisha but because of Rudy. Hearing him speak in such a stern voice Both triggered the innate stop. fear that Norn had built up for him. She truly believed that Rudy was going to hit her here. Really? Now, even though he didn't actually do so this time, Norn could never be certain that Rudy wouldn't do so next time. She was really, really actually scared of like the physical abuse from Rudy, huh? That just goes to show how significant that first time encounter was with Rudy fucking up Paul in season one. She wondered if this was the fear that she would constantly have to live with now. That's when the topic of dorms came up and just like that a solution to everything had appeared. You see, if she moved to the dorms, then she wouldn't have to see Aisha or Rudy anymore. 
she wouldn't be compared to anyone who was better, and she could just be herself and live her own life. It was the perfect solution to everything, yet when Rudy accepted it, we no, know that it made work her that feel way. sad a bit. Even so, her new life- Yeah, that's right! Didn't, didn't, she, didn't Annie just said last episode or some shit? It's like, when the dorm life shit got approved, Norm was like, wait, why is Rudy just letting me go so easily? Does he actually not care about me? It's like, what the fuck do you want, bitch? What, what, what? If I say yes, I don't care about you. If I say no, I'm not letting you do what you want to do. It's, there's no fucking winning with her, man. Life in the dorms was actually quite exciting. She gained a new roommate who was oh? genuinely kind to her. All right, we saw kind of this bird girl, but uh, we didn't really get to see much of her. She was in the episode, though. And though her and the other beast folk were what her grandma would describe as demons, Richard had been able to teach Norn otherwise. It Grandma's racist. It was because of that that she was actually able to become friendly with Marissa. Class was drastically different from how it was in Millis because rather than have numerous courses solely dedicated to religion, Everything in Renoa was focused on magic. Coming in halfway made picking things up rather difficult too, so it was only natural that Norn would struggle a bit. In fact, Marissa had actually had to step in and tutor her for a while. This Marissa helped her to learn dub. some of the basics that she missed, and that made the whole study process a bit less discouraging. I mean, there were plenty of times where Norn hated herself for being so stupid. <laughs> Even more so when her intelligence directly influenced whether she would have to live with Rudy or not. <clears throat> then, it was over time that Norn would start to hear more about Rudy, and it was the contradicting way in which everyone spoke of him that led to her breakdown and eventual isolation. The initial of I'm surprised she didn't try to run away from the entire school itself, but then again, then she would be, like, dead, right? She'd, like, she, like she's not gonna survive by herself, but I wonder if she's ever thought about that. Just, like, if you're just gonna be com constantly compared at home, so you leave home to go to the dorm, but it's like you can't escape that because Rudy is just, like, a god here. If he try to leave, and then <laughs> what if Norn leaves and tries to go to different places? But then they start about they start talking about wow. You remember that guy named Quagmire and like Rudy's feats as an adventure? Also, it's still so legendary that people still talk. So like, no matter what, where Norn goes, it's she'll never be able to escape Rudy's shadow. Opinion was that everyone was afraid of him since he was, after all, the leader of the Demonic Six, a group of thugs who went around doing whatever they wanted. The Demonic Six, something they skipped in the anime. But this is like a very shonen-esque group. Linea Persona. <laughs> Zanova looking real fucking cool here. Why does Zanova look so cool? We even have Demon King Bodyguardi in our Elite Six. Whatever they wanted. Rumor had it that two of them were collecting panties on his direct orders, so yep. to hear Rudy was doing Not that direct while orders. Paul was risking his life, once again led Norn's opinion of him to sink even lower. How do you... How... <sighs> It's ridiculous. I guess her assumption was Linnea and Persona. It's her imagination going crazy, right? Because like Linnea and Persona, if they're part of the Immortal Six, then it did, did, sorry, the Demonic Six, then it's like, oh, these girls are doing such despicable things. Who's their boss? Rudy. Therefore, Rudy bad. Linnea and Persona was doing this to <laughs> try to please boss man. Trying to get like the new crops panties. Did Norn's panties also get stolen? I'm not sure, because when Rudy found out, he made the girls return it, but like... Did Norm's panties also get stolen, or was she able to escape this fate? It wasn't fair that he got to fool around doing whatever he wanted here. What went to make things even worse was that, despite all the peculiar things Norn heard Rudy did at school, his reputation was still mostly positive amongst everyone. Mm -hmm. He never did anything to hurt or harass anyone, and whenever he did see someone getting picked on, he would always step in and make them stop. Combine this with the non-stop praise for his exceptional magic, as well as the amazing tutoring skills he Julie. displays with Julie and the conflicting portrayal of the Rudy she knew and the one everyone else did, eventually bubbled up to the breaking point we see here. She I thought that she was having a panic attack in this scene. He hated Rudy and thought he was a terrible person, but the hard truth to swallow was that she would never be able to compete with him. So, with everyone telling her to be more like him, a whole blanket of confusion and inadequacy began to envelop her again, eventually leading to the point where she just couldn't take it anymore. It was as all these emotions finally got the better of her that that's when we get to the point where she's unable to leave her bed anymore. Her realization about Rudy was mostly the same after, but there was an extra bit where she looked at things from his perspective, 
Mm -hmm. as she considered what it was like to struggle the way that Rudy did, she realized she too probably would have punched Paul for his demeaning comments as well. So it was as she slowly came to see her and Rudy weren't so different that she also came to understand she should try to make amends with him. Which is more than I can expect from a 10 year old kid like her. Honestly, everything just stems from the fact that she's a dumb 10 year old kid and that's perfectly fine. She's a perfect depiction of what a realistic 10 year old girl in a fantasy setting would be like living under the shadows of everyone. I get it. I get it. It's just, I'm just too used to having ex exceptional characters and a, and a part of me is just so impatient and um, sociopathic to the point that I can't, I start making fun of a girl that's struggling right now because I just see everyone else succeeding. I'm, I'm just terrible. But a part of me, listen, I'm just, when I see Norn doing shit like this, it just like frustrates me. Unfortunately, it didn't matter how much she wanted to though, since at this point her body simply wouldn't move anymore. She knew what she had to do and she wanted to actually do it, but some part of her just wouldn't let her. That's when she would notice Rudy was already there, and while Paul and Rudyard would have been by her side comforting her, Rudy kept his distance watching silently. It was when he spoke with the utmost hesitation that Norn finally realized it was Rudy who was scared Damn, of her. Damn, that panel. She saw now that he was afraid of her rejecting him. The instant she understood that this was what Rudy was feeling was the same instant all her negative emotions dissipated. She no longer hated him or found him scary because what she saw in Rudy was the exact same thing she saw in Paul. Paul. It was a compassionate anxiety that was all too similar. This was only possible due to Norn's extreme sensitivity and empathy which in turn makes her very in touch with her own emotions. I love the light novel art of the crying scene more than the anime because the anime scene it was just so dark and blue and i couldn't see shit but this is like very vibrant it's the reason she's able to understand so quickly how rudy is feeling and in turn sort through her own emotions herself that would be it for norn's side of things which brings us now to how rudy perceived it all to him what norn did was a truly impressive accomplishment she processed her emotions all by herself th honestly yeah it is i think it is impressive because Rudy wasn't able to do it, right? Rudy wasn't able to do it back on Earth. I make the same, but like, it's a bit, I don't know. Some people are saying like, what I said about how Rudy not having the infrastructure to succeed compared to Norn was wrong, apparently. Apparently their family went to leagues and above and beyond in Call of Duty. And actually, she had just all the same opportunities too. The brother actually wasn't just like a, a, a forehead answer where it's just like, come on, get good. Nah, you'll be better. Like, come on, other people are suffering. Apparently it wasn't like that. I don't know. I can't fucking trust YouTube comments. People, monkeys will say whatever the fuck they want. But my interpretation was Rudy didn't really have the things to succeed. Norn did. However, Norn was able to overcome the problems and basically uh, take her out of the situation. Lift herself up where Rudy kind of just died in front of a gas station. Then overcame whatever obstacles that were blocking her. To Paul and Aisha, she may just be this average kid, but to Rudy, his opinion of her was vastly different now. What? She'd displayed a feat of strength that Rudy's past self could never accomplish. This is objectively true. She did do that. And to be on the other end of it, allowed him to understand his own problems from a different perspective. So with this and Nanahoshi's breakdown allowing him to confront his own inner demons, you could say that there's two less weights holding Rudy down now. But okay. yeah, that's pretty- and that means that everything has been handled. Everything is happy as it ever can be, and all the problems are gone. And now, when our house of cards, of night things, and Rudy just experiencing happiness is formed, we should be getting turning point three. Guys, y'all know what to do. Go to Mr. Annie use the channel. Go, go, go give him a like, right? Sub to his channel, he gives us such great breakdowns. And yes, I know, I'm a terrible person. I am a terrible person that has beef with a 10 year old kid in an anime because I'm a petty motherfucker that thinks that Norn is fucking annoying. He's an annoying fucking dumb little 10 year old kid. And that's exactly who she is. And there's nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. I think a lot of people have the wrong idea of like um, what I mean by that. Norn is an annoying, insecure, dumb 10 year old. And most 10 year olds are just like that. There's nothing wrong with being that. It's just the fact that I see other characters like Aisha and other exceptional people like Rudy at her age, you know, doing that shit. Rudy, it's not really a fair comparison because it's a reincarnation, but you know what I mean, right? It's really unfair for me to be able to, you know, compare someone average like Norn to everyone else, but I'm just 
impatient. I'm just a petty motherfucker. That's it. You can expect turning point three. Uh, probably sometime later. I'm gonna put out Demon Slayer out first tonight.